put on Assistant Commerce Secretary Charles Meissner, and Huang was able to keep his security clearance. Charles Meissner later died in the same plane crash that killed Ron Brown. One official said, a lot of secrets died with Chuck Meissner. We now know that during the 1996 campaign, John Huang was actively seeking campaign funds for Bill Clinton from Asian sources who have ties to organized criminal syndicates, narcotics trafficking, gambling, prostitution, and communist China's intelligence services. During this same period, he had access to highly classified information. Lieutenant Colonel Liu Chaoying is the daughter of General Liu Huiqing, China's premier PLA officer and an old revolutionary communist soldier. She also studied Marxism-Leninism at the Chinese People's University in Beijing, a major training center for the future Communist Party officials. Colonel Liu is a communist. She is a high-tech spy. She was an official of two red Chinese companies that deal in arms trafficking. She ran at least tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars through Johnny Chung into the Democratic National Committee, and she met Clinton twice at fundraisers. According to FBI Director Louis Free, Chinese criminal gangs called triads have emerged as a significant and violent force in the United States, committing contract murders, extortion, drug trafficking, kidnapping, prostitution, weapon smuggling, and money laundering. The triads have been guests of the Clinton White House many times and have made illegal contributions to the Clinton-Gore re-election campaign. Neg Lapseng is a Macau criminal syndicate figure who visited the White House on many occasions. He attended a number of fundraisers and even sat next to the president at some of them. Neg Lapseng and others are partners in Angdu International of Thailand, a firm that procures Thai women many of them underage, for prostitution. In May 1996, these men were honored guests at a Clinton fundraiser. Charlie Tree is another person from Taiwan. Uh, he grew up in a rough neighborhood uh, that is the breeding ground for a criminal element called triads. He came to the United States to work in the kitchen of his sister's um, Chinese restaurant in, uh, in Little Rock. Uh, became friends with uh, um, Mr. Clinton when he was a, an Arkansas official and so forth and so on. And when the president, when he became the president, he used that to uh, to exploit uh, his his business interests. He became uh, a friend of a man from Macau, and we think they both became connected uh, through Chinese gangster connections. And the man from Macau became his, in essence, his. Uh, sponsor and uh, sugar daddy, if you will. The man from Macau uh, is in the business of exploiting uh, women for prostitution. He owns a hotel in Macau that is a brothel, and with two other men, he owns a separate company that procures Thai women for prostitution in Macau. Charlie Tree had been in Little Rock since the late 1970s and had known the Clintons for almost as long. Thus, he was the perfect triad messenger and agent in place for the People's Republic of China, ready to be reactivated without suspicion. As the Canadian study of triad behavior points out, once a triad, always a triad. For the past 50 years, the United States has guaranteed Taiwan's independence against Communist China's threat of forcible reunification. In March 1996, Taiwan, or the Republic of China, was preparing for a national ritual that the People's Republic of China despises. The ritual is called elections. When Taiwan's elections proceeded on schedule, the People's Liberation Army launched several of its intermediate-range ballistic missiles by firing them into the Pacific just off the north and south ends of the island. Clinton then sent battle groups from the 7th Fleet, including its two largest aircraft carriers, the Independence and the Nimitz, into the Taiwan Straits. This time, Clinton did the right thing. After this incident, two things happened. 
First, a top Chinese official in Beijing intimated to the U.S. Embassy that an attack against Los Angeles would be in the prospects if the United States interfered in Communist China's campaign of intimidation against Taiwan. But the Red Chinese government also tried a second channel. They sent Charlie Tree carrying a letter and a bag of money. On the morning of March 21, 1996, Tree dropped off several hundred thousand dollars to the President and the First Lady's favorite charity, the Presidential Legal Defense Trust. On the same day, Tree also delivered to the White House a letter about the situation in Taiwan. Excerpts from the letter are as follows. Once the hard parties of the Chinese military inclined to grasp U.S. involvement as foreign intervention, is U.S. ready to face such challenge? It is highly possible for China to launch real war. I hope the President will carefully consider these issues and make the decisions that are beneficial to the U.S., China, and Taiwan altogether. President Clinton's reply letter read, The redeployment of the independents and the Nimitz was intended as a signal to both Taiwan and the PRC that the United States was concerned about maintaining stability in the Taiwan Strait region. It was not intended as a threat to the PRC. This letter was a complete sellout of Taiwan. Clinton, in effect, was saying that his administration would no longer be prepared to deter Beijing from any menacing actions it may take toward Taiwan. Bill Clinton had caved in, in the face of pressure from Beijing, by a letter that was not delivered through public or diplomatic channels, but by a man whose previous experience was a member of a notorious triad gang, a fry cook from a Chinese restaurant in Little Rock who was under indictment for violating election laws. The president made a mistake to just overlook what the Chinese government did at Tiananmen Square and give them most favored nation status. On June 4th, 1989, Chinese tanks and armored personnel carriers rolled into Tiananmen Square to confront pro-democracy students from four of Beijing's most prestigious universities. The students were unarmed and practitioners of nonviolence. When it was over, some 4,000 to 6,000 people lay dead in the streets of Beijing. We know who did it. We know the names of the, of the uh, Chinese units. We know their commanding officers. We know everyone. And the reason we know is because NATO's uh, military attaches had spread all over, the, all over the city that night, and they were reporting from all points of the city, and we know who the, who, uh, the commanders of the Chinese units were and what they did that night. And they killed the Chinese young people, and they knew what they were doing, and they did it anyway. Congress reacted immediately, forcing President Bush to cut off all military exchanges with the PLA. This policy stood for the next four years. As soon as President Clinton was uh, elected, that policy was reversed. And so as near as we can tell, every Chinese general who was personally involved in killing Chinese young people has been to the United States and received the royal treatment. Now, typically, how this works is as follows. The Chinese general comes here in secret goes to the Pentagon, gets a 19-gun honor guard salute. He will go to the White House, meet with the President in the Oval Office for discussions. Then he will be taken to American military bases to learn things about the military that we think they should not, and then he goes home. And we're talking somewhere between a dozen and two dozen uh, generals. The Clinton administration